Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 80022, Spider Queen's Arachnoid Base from the LEGO Monkey Kid theme. This set contains 1,170 pieces, 6 minifigures, and will retail for $119.99 in the US. This is an all-new set coming in March of 2021, which was sent to me early by the LEGO Group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Before I get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. A couple days ago, I just did early reviews of all five of the new March 2021 Ninjago sets, and over the next couple of days, I'll be reviewing all seven of the new March 2021 Monkey Kid sets. So by liking the video, you help support me in the channel, and by subscribing, you'll get all my new reviews in your subscription box as soon as they're posted. But with all that being said, let's get on to the review. So we'll start by taking a look at the main build of the set, the arachnoid base itself. I'll just come right out and say it, this is my favorite set of this wave. It's absolutely massive too, like I can't explain to you the sheer size of this thing, so if you're interested in getting it, just keep in mind, this set is massive. However, the sheer size of it just makes it really fun to me. Building this, it reminded me a lot of LEGO Agents back in the day, with just like the wacky colors and just the huge villain builds. It's the kind of thing that I could imagine like seeing in a LEGO magazine as a kid under the Agents theme, but never having the money to afford, but like always looking at it and wanting it. So this really just filled me with nostalgia because it really feels like something from that theme. But nostalgia aside, this is just a really, really fun build. You can see this is like a walking fortress that was designed to sort of like represent a spider, and I absolutely love how they did it. It has all eight legs, it has a bunch of eyes in the front, it's got that giant back area, it really just looks like a giant spider. But it also works really well as a vehicle and a playset, and I just love the multi-purpose of it here. I think the colors are really fun too, the lime green mixed with the purple, it's sort of like Joker color scheme, but the black tone in there kind of messes that up. But I think the Spider Queen is a really cool villain design, and this fits her like perfectly. And then just like the touches of trans red and everything, it's just an awesome looking color combination. It feels very evil, but also very fun. It's just an awesome looking color combination, it feels very evil, but but also very fun. It reminds me a lot of just like Halloween. I'll take you up close to show you like the Marchka details, but first let me show you what I can show you from back here. To start, I'll show you how the legs of the vehicle actually move. They don't all actually move. The uh, back legs and the front middle legs don't move at all. They're kind of just stuck in place. However, the side legs and the front legs do actually move, and I really like the front leg splay feature. There's this banner sticking out the middle of the vehicle, and that's just like the Spider Queen's emblem. But if you push this from side to side, it lifts up one leg or the other. Or if you pull it back, it lifts up both legs. And it really feels like there's just like a variety of motion you can get this guy in. You can have both legs up, you can have him just like in the middle of walking, going back and forth. You can just like raise one a little and the other one a little. Like, you can have him in like all sorts of different poses, and it makes him feel very lifelike. The back middle legs are not nearly as fun, but they're still alright. They're just our little joints that allow them to be rotated up ever so slightly. So you can have it in all the way like that, but I assume you wouldn't want it that far. So you can have it just up ever so slightly to have it like in the middle of walking. Same thing with the other leg on the other side. So with those middle legs and these front legs right here, you can really give the vehicle the illusion of it like being in the middle of like walking down the street. They capture like the shape of the spider absolutely perfectly. Like I'm kind of in awe of how well this is done. It's just such a fun build. I genuinely love this so much. Turning the spider around, you can see like the large back area right here. This actually opens up and this is how you access the interior. It's not difficult to do, just turn these out just like this. And there's the interior of the vehicle. We'll take a closer look at that up close in a moment, but I just wanted to show you like how it opens up from the outside. And then if you want to close it back up, you just pull it back in just like that. But I think that's about all I got to show you from this far away, so let me pick the camera up, move you in a little closer so you can see the more intricate details. So to start, we'll take a look at the spider's face. I really like how they did this. You can see there's eight separate distinct eyes, six big ones and two small ones. However, the way these like little rounded 2x2 two two, uh, pieces are designed, you can see the studs on the inside because they're transparent. So it actually sort of gives the illusion that there is more than just eight eyes. And I just think that's a really cool look. You can also see there's a little like trans green piece coming down here that's meant to represent like venom dripping out of the spider. Obviously, if you want to remove that, you can very easily, but I think it's a cool look for it. They're a bit hidden away right now, but there's also like these little pincers on the sides to represent the spider's mouth. They can be rotated out just like that or rotated back in. The head itself doesn't move at all, but a few of the individual eyes can be like rotated so you can be looking in all sorts of different directions. I think it definitely looks best when all eyes are looking forward, but it's just an option that's there. Next, here's a look at the smaller legs on the front. These are the ones that are controlled by moving the banner on the back. They use like this rubber lime green and trans clear piece right here to represent, I guess, venom going into the legs right here. And you can see there's a couple stickers all throughout of these like black and green stripes on the thing. They use like these larger tooth pieces right here for the feet of the spider and I think those work pretty well. And the other front leg is identical, it's just mirrored. The remaining six legs are all the same. We'll take a look at this one right here because it's one of the back middle ones so it can be rotated up. But they're all designed exactly the same way. It's like a six times build in the instructions. They use the same green tooth pieces out the front. They use like these longer wing pieces right here with a sticker on it with these like lime green stripes. They use like some trans lime green pipe pieces right here, which I think fit in really well. 
and just contribute to that like overall sort of like venomous look that the vehicle's going for. And the other side here is exactly identical. And as I said, that's the case for all six of the back legs here. The only difference is the back and middle front legs use this connection system right here, which you'd see in this makes sure that these legs can't move at all. They're just static in place. But there's a look at the joint that allows the back middle legs to move just like this. And here it is on the other side. The like neck area of the spider uses lavender and purple and you can see there's some stickers on there. This just shows like the venom going all throughout this vehicle. And then directly behind it is the main platform from the Spider Queen. Here's that banner like we took a look at earlier. This is the one that controls the front legs. You can see that there's a couple of jumper pieces. This is where you can stand the Spider Queen if you want to. She can attach to them just like this. But there's plenty of room to put like other characters in the vehicle too. There's another one of those jumpers behind the banner, and then you can see there's a little bit of an entrance into that main back area, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. Moving up, here's like this angled roof area. This is where the Spider Queen puts like her captured prisoners on display for everyone to see. In this set, it's the Monkey King. You can see he's got handcuffs on and everything fits perfectly up there. So he's just like on display to taunt Monkey Kid and the team, I suppose. A little sticker next to that shield piece right here with just like some green venom and some vials. It's also a little section with this purple chest right here, which can be removed. This, if you open it up, contains a skull and some bones inside, so I don't want to know what happened there. But behind it, you can see those little sticker piece right there with some spider symbols and some other things. And the chest can be reinserted very easily. Directly behind where they keep Monkey Kid prisoner, there's like this little station right here. This looks to be where they keep track of Monkey King's vitals and the vitals of like the base itself. There's also this little sticker piece right here, which is Monkey. I'm not sure what in particular that's supposed to be like calling reference to, but if anyone knows, you can let me know in the comments. Some more of those black bars stickered under the lime green here. And then we get down to the main back area of the spider. First, I just want to mention from the outside, this looks incredible. I love all these like stickered slope pieces all around the edges and then these like larger dark purple slope pieces combined with the lavender. It looks so good. The trim of green all over too is just a nice pop of color and I really appreciate how the Technic pieces are green too because those are usually color locks so it's cool to see them in like a bright actual color. Same exact thing on the other side, just mirrored. From the back, you can see like they use these large like black slope pieces right here. And then there's like these next one shield pieces with stickers on them. And as I showed earlier, this entire area can open up just like this. And once you get inside, there is a lot of stuff going on. Starting on the left side, you can see that there's like this lavender flag right here with a sticker on it. There's this black wrench on the wall. There's this little vial of poison. There's a couple of these in the set. I'll point out all of them when we get to them. But this one's just a clear minifigure head and then it's got that little spider logo on it. Another one of those like striped lime green tiles. These are all stickers, but because they use so many in the set, I really wish it was printed because it would have made sense just to print it if you're going to have so many, but oh uh, well. And at the top, there's another lavender flag with a sticker on it. However, this is a bit hard to see. So there is one other transformation you can do. Once you have it open, you can move these entire like black areas back and then move these little ladders with them. So now you can have a much clearer look at that sticker. It looks to just be like a computer window. There's a bunch of tabs open. That looks like it might be YouTube or something, which is funny. And then you can do the same thing down at the bottom. Though, honestly, I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse. And then finally, to show on this side, you just have two little stickered pieces right here. A little, like, targeting computer and then just some green vials. Coming over to the other side, we have the exact same two stickers. Just flip the other way around. I'm not sure exactly what these are. I'm not super familiar with Monkey Kid lore. So if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. Another little lavender flag right here. This one looks like it's playing Tetris. I think that's a really cool sticker. And then another one of these little vials. This one's on a purple minifigure head, and this one has the same exact printed spider symbol on it. Moving down, you have a little fire hydrant attached to the wall. You have another one of those poison vials. This one uses a red minifigure head with a little printed spider tile on it. And this looks to be another computer browser. This one has a little note on it. It's looking up food, and then it has that spider symbol right there. Moving over to this middle area, there's this little platform right here which you can pull out. This, I believe, is supposed to be a repair station for the little spider drones. You get one in this set, and we'll take a look at him in a moment, but these come in like almost every one of the Monkey Kid sets this wave. And I believe this is what the vials are for. This one has like a lime green one on his back, but if you wanted to, you could replace it with the clear one, the purple one, or the red one. But on the box art for this set, they show you attaching this guy to this little jumper piece right here, and then removing his legs and attaching them to these like little bars over here. So if you wanted to like upgrade him or repair him, this would be the station to do it. This also connects to the entrance to the main area that we took a look at a little while ago. And you can see in there, there's some trans lime green pieces. I assume these are meant to represent like vials of poison. And then finally under that, there's this little jail cell right here. This can be opened up and you can throw a prisoner in there. So if you don't want the Monkey King like out on display for everyone to see, you can just have him in prison in the little jail cell right here and close up just like that. And you can see there's even prison bars on the other side. Speaking of the other side, here's what the underside of the spider looks like. This right here is the mechanism of the banner to move the front legs. And these two things on the side as well as this main area in the back are the main two things that like, keep this thing stable when it's standing up. Because obviously this is a massive build, so without these it would topple over super easily. But that's about it for the main build of the set, so let's take a look at the side build and then the minifigures. Here's the first side build in the set. This is a little flyer for Monkey Kid, and honestly, it's not great. Maybe if I was more familiar with like the Monkey Kid lore, I'd like this a little bit more. I guess it looks a little bit like the staff from the Monkey King mech from last year, so it might have some relation to that. 
it just feels a bit awkward to me. The wings seem to be going the wrong direction. The, like, the little cloud, like, exhaust is coming out this end, but the wings are facing, like, this way. It just feels a bit awkward to me. Monkey Kid can sit or stand right there. There's a couple of stickered, like, little console pieces on the side, but that's about it for this build. Nothing all too special about it. And then the other side builds this little spider guy that I showed you earlier. These guys come in so many of the Monkey Kid sets this way, but they're all slightly different. This guy has black legs instead of purple, and all of his feet are, like, these green small tooth pieces instead of the larger tooth pieces. So it seems to be like a lower level version of like these spider drones. However, the cool thing about him, like I showed you before, is he can be customized a little bit. They all have like these green vials of poison at the back, but this can be actually changed on this guy. So you could replace that with a trans clear one that I showed you earlier. It's got that same little spider logo on the back. Or the trans purple one. Or the trans red one. I personally think the trans red one's probably the best because it matches the little eye at the front, but I think it's cool that you have that like customizability. But yeah, that's about it for this guy. I think he's cute, but I don't have much more to say about him than that. So moving on here, the first three minifigures in the set, we have Monkey Kid, we have Pigsley, and we have the Monkey King. Monkey Kid himself has a really interesting variant in this set. I believe it's new, but again, I don't have any of the first two waves of the Monkey Kid set, so I'm not positive. But he's got like these golden eyes on his figure. They're very similar to the Monkey King's eyes, and they remind me a little bit of the hands of time versions of Kai and Neo from Ninjago. And I think it looks super cool. It just looks like he's fully powered up and getting ready to fight. Other than that, though, he's the same exact design he has in the rest of the sets this wave. He's got, like, his Monkey Kid jacket with a little symbol, but it's opened up, and then he's got a blue undershirt. And he's got these dual-molded legs with the side printing. They look really good, but they come in every set, so, I, like, they're not as interesting as they once were, but it's still nice to see that level of detail in this main character here. Pigsley is really fun. I love the design of this guy. I love the pig mold with, like, the snout and the angry face. I'm not sure if the torso print's new. I'm not sure if this is a new variant of him, but regardless, I think it's really cool. It looks to be sort of like a battle vest, but he's got, like, sausages and stuff on it. It's really funny. And then he has a giant red pitchfork, which I think is cool. And the Monkey King is just in sort of like a normal outfit. He's not in like his full battle getup like we've gotten him in before. This also does come in the Flower Fruit Mountain set. But it's interesting to see him here without like any weapons or anything. It's just sort of like tied up and trapped with the Spider Queen. Here these guys are with their accessories removed so you can better look at them. You can see a little bit more of Monkey Kid's eyebrows and a bit more of his torso. If you haven't seen Pigsley's head before, you can see he just has like a normal minifigure head underneath everything. And you can see the full extent of Monkey King's face when he's just angry. It's the same face we've gotten for him before. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, I do like that his legs are dual mold and they look a lot like Monkey Kids. It's a cool sense of consistency. And they have a similar colored torso though, if not exactly the same. Here's a look at alternate faces and back torso prints. I really like Monkey Kid's alternate face, where he's just sort of like shocked and surprised. I'd argue this is the best version of Monkey Kid this way. The powered up eyes look really cool, and this is just a really animated and useful expression to have. And then he's just got his little symbol in the back, and you can see the legs are dual molded. There's Pigsley's back torso print, you can see like the vest continues on to the back. It's like connected with like these blue straps, and then he's wearing like red underneath. I also like how he has mid legs, it's just nice to get that piece. They haven't been super common in non-licensed Lego themes, so it's nice to see them here. Monkey King's back torso print is fairly simple, and this face print is just like happy. Obviously, that doesn't make sense when he's all tied up uh, with the Spider Queen, but that's an alternate face if you want to free him. And he also has this really cool like monkey tail attachment. And then here are the final three minifigures we have in this set. We have the Spider Queen herself, Syntax, and Gia, or Jaya. He's just a generic civilian. The Spider Queen is an amazing figure, genuinely. It's a different version from the version we got last year, and the new color scheme is just so cool. It's the same color scheme as like the full build itself. But it looks just so much better here. Obviously, it looks good in the build too, but it's just amazing like how incredible it looks here. She's got like this lime green design in her torso that continues a little bit into her dress. And then she's got like this dark purple printing all over her dress and this like the spider web design and then the giant spider emblem in the middle. I love her face print too. It's very expressive. I love just like the cheekbones, the purple lips and everything. It feels very animated, very unique, very expressive. And her headdress piece is really cool too with all the spider legs coming out. She's got this really interesting staff right here. This probably has some like lore on the show, but I'm not familiar with it. But this is another place you can attach like those vials of poison that I showed you before. Here I've got three of them attached. I have the green, the clear, and the purple. But you can very easily like switch those around, put the red one on, put none of them on. It's really up to you what you do, and I'm sure if they have some context in the show, there will be like some correct way to put them. Syntax here is an awesome figure as well. He's like a spider computer guy sort of thing. You can see he's got like an ID card, a calculator, a little pen in his pocket. He's got like these VR goggles with little spider eyes on him over his eyes, which I think is really cool. He's also got like this lime green like sort of Joker-like hair. And then he's got like this back attachment that allows him to have six arms total, right? Two actual minifigure arms, and then he has these four on the back. This one's holding a mug. This one's just like a spinning like drill bit. That's just an empty arm, and that's like a little like radar panel. It's cool that they incorporated the spider aesthetic into just like this tech guy. And I may even like him more than the Spider Queen herself. He's just a really fun villain design. And then Jaya is a Lego City figure. That's that's about all I got to say for him. He looks fine. His face print works really well for Dareth if you wanted to use it for that. But yeah, he uses like an updated version of a torso print that's been around for like literally a decade. So not that interesting to me. 
Moving up a little closer, the Spider Queen's weapon we're moving a slightly closer look at these guys. There's a look at syntax, like extra arm attachment from the back. I believe this piece was originally introduced with the Outriders from Avengers, though I'm not positive about that. But anyway, it works really effectively here, and it's cool to see that. Spider Queen herself, the only part I don't love about her is the cape. I like the design, I just feel like it's a little awkward on her. It uses like this firmer plastic like we've gotten on sales before. My main complaint with it is it has a little Lego logo right there and that's just like really obvious to me. I wish there, there was a way they could have made that smaller or more hidden. Because that kind of takes me out of like the immersion of this figure here. I do like the design of the cape itself, I just feel like the logo is a little out of place and the material used to make it is a bit odd. Here these three are with our accessories removing a better look at Spider Queen's face print. I really like her eyebrows, how they come down and how she's just got such like a wicked smile on her. Syntax is like a really fun face print. You can see he actually has five eyes total and one of his eyes is robotic and he's got a little mustache right there and that big wide smile. And then here these guys are from the back and see the Spider Queen's alternate face. She has this little like mask over her face. Same thing with Syntax there. Maybe this is like to keep them safe from the Venom. Again, I'm not familiar with the Monkey Kid lore, so if anyone knows, feel free to let me know in the comments. But it definitely looks really cool. And there's what it looks like with the headdress back on. And there's how Syntax looks with the hair and goggles. I do think this side of the face looks a little weird with the goggles for Syntax, but it works well enough. Spider Queen's back torso print is awesome. I might even like it better than the front. Once again, the color scheme is just amazing. I like the spider aesthetic. But the use of purple in the spider webs right here, and then just like the green bits going all throughout, it feels very like alien or extraterrestrial to me. And it just makes it look very ominous and creepy. Syntax's back torso print's a little more goofy and fun. It's like a spider like being slowly loaded into a game. You can see it's got like pixelated area up top and then like a solid like spider area at the bottom. It's a fun design, but definitely not as intricate as the front of his torso and definitely not as interesting as the Spider Queen's back torso print. And then Gia is fine. I like the scared face on this side, but nothing all too special. It's nice to get that facial expression, but eh, he's all right. So overall, would I recommend this set? I think of all the Monkey Kid sets, this is the one that I would say yes, I would recommend. It is just really fun, and I feel like I've used that word a lot in this review, but that is the perfect word to describe it. The colors are creative, the design is unique, and it's such a cool looking like mech creature build. As I said, it reminds me a lot of LEGO Agents. Obviously LEGO Agents didn't have any sets this big, but the color scheme and the idea of just like a giant robot spider for a giant spider villain is just so LEGO Agents to me. You get a pretty good minifigure selection too. This is the only set Pigsy comes in in this third wave. I believe this version of Monkey Kid is exclusive, and this is the cheapest way to get this version of Monkey King. It's also nice to get both the Spider Queen and Syntax. So as a whole, I'd say yeah, I would recommend it. My only warning to you guys is this set is big. Be prepared for how big it is. If you're interested in picking this up, make sure you have room for it. At the time of me recording this, this set still isn't up on LEGO's website, so I don't have like the exact dimensions of it. But I would look into those if I were you, because this set is massive. Like, it's shocking how big it is. But hey, if you have the room for it and you're interested in it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. This is a really, really fun set. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you guys could please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I've got more Monkey Kid reviews just like this one coming very, very soon. So if you subscribe to the channel, they'll appear in your sub box as soon as they're uploaded. But I think that's about all I got to say for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.